Hi everyone, and welcome to Gwen Collects. A couple of weeks ago, I put up a video where I discussed the best and worst figure manufacturers, and I got a ton of really, really great feedback on that video, but the main piece of feedback that I did get was that I missed out on a lot of manufacturers. And I knew that when I was making the video, I wanted to talk mostly about companies that I had bought figures from, just because I had like personal experience, but I think that that video was really helpful for a lot of people, so I thought I would do a little bit of research myself through my figure collection and on Reddit to see if I could talk a little bit about the other manufacturers. So if you are new to this hobby, there are tons of figure manufacturers out there. You can watch my first video where I discuss a few of them, but I missed a lot of them and I really like to talk about them. So this video, I'm going to talk about a few more like niche brands, but also a few big ones that I didn't discuss in my first video. A few of these companies I have figures from, and a few of these companies I will be receiving figures from very soon. So when I have those figures, I'll let you guys know what I think of them. But regardless of whether or not I have the figures, I can look up pictures online. So I'll give you my opinions on the best and a few mediocre figure companies this time around. So I know this video is gonna be long, let's get right into it. All right, so the first company I'm going to be talking about is Wing. So I recently got a figure from Wing, my little Tomoe right here, and I'm really, really happy with how she turned out. I think Wing is great if you want just simple, clean execution of characters. They do a really nice job just making a nice figure. I also appreciate that they often will make more like niche characters. They're the only manufacturer to make a figure of Tomoe, and I really appreciate that. I know it's probably more profitable to make very popular characters, but everyone loves a niche character every once in a while, right? From what I've seen on my figure collection and from real life, is that it seems like Wings figures often live up to their prototypes. Uh, people are usually happy with them. They usually turn out pretty nice and everyone is happy when they receive their figures. That said, they often partner with companies like Aniplex is a common one that they partner with to produce figures. And it seems like those figures haven't really turned out as well. So for instance, Aniplex has partnered with Wing to make the Demon Slayer figures. And honestly, the Tanjiro and Nezuko that have come out so far don't look that amazing. Now, I don't know if that is due to Aniplex or if that is due to Wing, but that's definitely something you should be a little bit concerned about. But from all of their pure just Wing figures, people seem to be pretty happy with the quality. The other thing is, is Wing is pretty moderately priced. I would say Tomoe was a bit expensive for the simple scale that she is, and their Aniplex collabs are even more expensive, so if you're looking for an affordable figure, I don't know if Wing is necessarily where you want to look. Speaking of Aniplex, we'll move on to them next. So Aniplex makes a lot of figures. They are a big anime producer. A lot of the anime that I'm not sure if it's in Japan or like worldwide, but a lot of the anime I consume is licensed under Aniplex. So they seem to be a pretty big company. So big in fact that they make their own characters. Sometimes Aniplex releases characters under their own name and often they will collab with different manufacturers to make some really nice scales. Aniplex produces some really, really nice scales. For example, we have the Chika and Kaguya figures that I have on their way in the mail. I'm very excited about them. And seeing their pictures, they are beautiful. They are such nice quality. So I'm really, really excited about those ones. In addition, they have some pretty spectacular Demon Slayer ones, like the Shinobu figure that they have the prototype up for. Wow, that figure is absolutely gorgeous. Now, they are quite pricey, and to remedy that, Aniplex has released a new line of figures that are coming out this year called the Kono Fig figures, and they're all around like $50 to $60 each, and they look pretty cool. None of them have come out yet, so we can't really say if they're gonna be nice or not, but I would definitely keep an eye out for those because if they turn out really nice, I think that the Kono Fig line is going to be a great figure line. Now onto some cons about Aniplex. Aniplex is probably the most expensive figure manufacturer. 
and I don't think that their quality lives up to the actual figures themselves. They just, like, they are beautiful. They make a lot of really nice figures, but they're so, so expensive. Like 200 plus US dollars for a simple scale. It's just absurd. Like, Anyplex prices their figures insanely high, and I just don't think that the quality matches that price. The other thing is, is that sometimes Aniplex figures actually just tank on the aftermarket. And I think it's due to their super high asking price. Nobody buys the figures. So I often find Aniplex figures in stock and on sale all over the place. So if you're thinking about getting an Aniplex figure, unless it's of a very, very popular character, you're honestly probably okay waiting until the figure is released and you can see people's pictures of it before buying the figure. I don't know if I would recommend pre-ordering Aniplex figures at all. But I mean, when you don't pre-order, you always take that chance that you won't be able to get the figure. But with Aniplex, they're so overpriced, you can often find the figure after release. So that would be my recommendation. Aniplex makes okay figures, but I wouldn't recommend pre-ordering them. Next up, we have Max Factory. So on my last video, a lot of people talked about Max Factory and how it was their favorite company. And I currently own zero Max Factory figures, but that will soon be changing when I get the amazing Lufia. Oh, I'm obsessed with this figure. I think I talk about it in like every single video, but I'm obsessed. <laughs> anyway, Max Factory is distributed by Good Smile Company and they do a great job. One plus for Max Factory is they make male scales and they make super cool male scales. Like, look at this one. I think his name is Alba. I don't know. I don't know what he's from but that figure is unreal. And the pictures that people have of him, he turned out perfect. So I would highly recommend Max Factory if you are looking for male scale figures because they just absolutely kill it. I love the dynamic poses and fashion that they put on their characters. Max Factory just, oh, they just get it right. And I really, really think that they are one of the top manufacturers, even if I don't own any figures from them yet. Another really nice thing is they make Figma. So I think they're one of the bigger Figma manufacturers. So if you're into posable figures, Figma are definitely a good option for you. Also, I have no cons for Max Factory. Seems like they just produce quality figures and they're at a pretty moderate price. So yeah, I'm happy with Max Factory. They rock. Next up, we have Q or QuestQ or QsQ. I've heard it said many different ways <laughs> and I don't know the correct one, but we'll go with QuestQ for this video. So QuestQ is a bit of a smaller brand, I think. I don't see a lot of people talking about them. They don't have a ton of figures, but they seem like to be a really, really nice brand. They make some absolutely beautiful scales. The one that co comes right to the forefront of my mind when I think of QuestQ is the Nanachi from Made in Abyss, I think. I haven't seen it, but oh, this figure is beautiful. And it turned out just absolutely perfectly. I am beyond impressed with this figure. And even though I haven't seen Made in Abyss, I think that I would love to have this figure in my collection. Also, I find that their figures have some of the best paint jobs of any figures I've seen. One I can think of right off the top of my head is from Oh, Witch Hat Atelier, I think it's called. And it's like this beautiful figure of a witch and she's like, her dress is flowing and the paint just looks immaculate. So I just am obsessed with Keskew's paint jobs and oh, I think their figures are beautiful. A few cons about QuestQ is that their figures take a super long time to come out. Like they recently announced a holo figure. Well, I say recently, but they actually announced it like a year ago. And we just recently got the unpainted prototype like a month ago. Why do they make us wait so long for best girl holo? I don't understand. They take a long time to go from announcement to unpainted prototype to painted prototype. And it kind of sucks because I just want to buy it, you know, <laughs> and they just take so long. So that is one thing that kind of is a bummer about QuestQ. 
that's really it though. Their prices I think are pretty fair. They're pretty on par with like Max Factory and like more like mid tier prices. They're definitely not as good as like say Good Smile Companies, Kotobukiya's or Manithos, but they're definitely not bad prices for the quality of figures that you're gonna get. Up next, we have a more niche brand as well called Amakuni. And Amakuni makes some beautiful scales. I think Amakuni makes some of the nicest scales that I've seen floating around online. They don't come out with scales super often, but when they do, oh, they are flawless. The ones that I can think of right off the top of my head are the Asuka figure that's up for pre-order right now. I'm dying, I want that figure so bad. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get it because I feel like if you already have the altar figure like I do, she's kind of doing the same pose. <sighs> but we'll see. Cause I really, really love like the blade that she's holding and I love how her plug suit looks. She just looks immaculate. So I'm obsessed with that Asuka figure. Another figure by Amakuni that I'm in love with, well, figures that I'm in love with and am seriously, seriously considering buying right now is the set of Abigail and Lavinia. I recently saw Annie Base here on YouTube do a video of them and they're so cute. I love that they hold hands and I'm in love with Lavinia. She's so creepy and so adorable. Like, I love her. So I really want that set. And you can just tell in that video that the figures are absolutely beautiful. The paint job, the sculpt, just everything about them is fantastic. And I think that just is a testament to Amakuni's top, top quality. Now, with that top quality, you definitely pay top quality prices as well. If I do want to get that set of Abigail and Lavinia, <laughs> it's going to be upwards of 400 Canadian dollars, which is pretty brutal, but they are beautiful and I don't mind paying a little bit more for figures if the quality is definitely there. So we'll see, but Emma Cooney does have pretty high prices. I think a little bit too high in my opinion. Next up, we have Belfine. So Belfine is a company I don't see talked about a ton, but it gets talked about here and there. They make a lot of scale figures. They have made a lot of uh, like Konosuba scales and some uh, like, Evangelion figures and their figures are okay. They're a little pricey and I mean they're nice, but I don't know. The only figures from Belfine that I've seen that I think are really really nice figures and really worth it are the My Hero Academia figures. I absolutely love them and I love their kind of comic book feel with the like block words on them. So I highly recommend those from Belfine, but basically every other figure uh, their figures are okay. They have a Megumin that I recently saw and it just looks bad. And it was so expensive. Like, yeah, it, Belfine is not amazing. I don't think I would recommend pre-ordering anything from Belfine. If you find a figure that you love by them, I don't think it'll be bad. It just won't be that great. So, I mean, I don't know. It's okay. And I think like if you love a character that they're making a figure of, go for it and you'll probably be pleased, but just know there will probably be paint defects. It's probably not gonna be the nicest sculpt or the coolest pose and their bases can be quite bland. So I would steer clear of Belfine if it were me, but I know everyone likes to collect differently. So they're not bad. Next up we have Orange Rouge. I don't have much to say about Orange Rouge, but I do appreciate that they make male figures. I think they make exclusively male figures from what I could see on my figure collection, which is pretty cool. They make a lot of male Nendos. They make the Haikyuu Nendoroids, which are fantastic Nendoroids, by the way. You should definitely check them out if you're into Nendoroids and you're into Haikyuu. And I think that they just do a nice job. I bought the Dazai scale from them and I've been very happy with it. I thought the price was extremely fair. And yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything bad to say about Orange Rouge. They kind of kill it and they make male figures, so they have the Gwen Collect stamp of approval. Next up, we have Fat Company. So Fat Company is a pretty popular brand that I didn't talk about in my first video, and Fat Company makes some really nice scales. They make beautiful bases, beautiful scales, 
and they just do an all-around great job I think. Their sculpts are really nice, their paint jobs are really nice, and I've seen many 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 super nice scales by them. I really like the Kill a Kill scales by them, I think they just absolutely knocked it out of the park on those, and I'm really excited to be getting the Chica Beach version when it comes out. So I think that Fat Company is usually a hit. They have a few figures that were kind of a miss, but even when they're a miss they're not too bad. Like the Akino figure from High School DxD, she's alright. Her base is kind of cool, but people were not super thrilled by her paint job, so there's that. But for the most part, they usually make really nice figures. The only two issues I have with Fat Company are that they are pretty pricey. Not absurd, but not great. You're probably going to pay $150 to $250 USD for a figure from them. So it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. And they put their figures up so far in advance, like a year and a half before the figure comes out, and I don't know why. <laughs> why can't everyone just be like Kotobukiya, where they put it like five to six months before it comes out? I don't know, but Fat Company is very bad for putting their figures up for pre-order way, way, way too far in advance. Finally, we have our last company I'm going to be talking about in this video, and it is one that was highly requested on my last video and it is Mega House. So Mega House makes a ton of figures and they make some amazing figures. My favorite Mega House figure being the C2 figure. Oh, it's wonderful. It is a great figure. If you're into Shonen Jump titles such as Naruto, One Piece, Code Geass, you're really gonna like Mega House because they make figures from those series and they make a lot of figures from those series. I would say like about 50% of their figures probably come from like <laughs> those big titles. I know they're releasing a Gojo and a Yuji figure, so they really like to make the figures in those shonen in the in the shonen sphere. Now, because they make a lot of shonen figures, they make a lot of male figures. So, good for Mega House, love to see the male figures, but they also make a lot of female figures too, which I love. I love that when you buy a figure from Mega House, you can get kind of like the whole set. Like you're able to get the female characters from a series and you're able to get the male characters from a series and you can put them all together. And they're really nice figures as well. I love the poses and the paint jobs on Mega House figures. I think they really kill it. And they have some amazing, amazing figures. I'll put a few that I like on the screen here, but. They, they just do a really, really nice job with their figures. Now, I think they are a bit overpriced. They're not horrifically overpriced by any means, but they're definitely overpriced. And sometimes their figures can be pretty lack lackluster for the price that they charge as well. Their bases are bad. Like, they make these insanely gorgeous figures and then plop them on a clear plastic base with a few support rods. Like, oh, why? Why do they do this? They make such dynamic poses and then put just a clear base with clear support rods. I don't understand it. Like, why ruin the figure in that way? One that I can think of like right off the top of my head that came out recently is from Dr. Stone. Why did they, why did they make her base clear like that? It looks so bad, like she's a beautiful figure and then the base is just so boring. I don't know why they did that, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> um, it definitely holds me back from pre-ordering their figures because you never know what the bases are going to look like. And they've actually had a spelling mistake on one of their like Code Geass bases before, so I think pre-ordering Mega House figures if you're super into the character they're making is a totally fine route to go, but you may be disappointed when they come and the base is clear plastic or just boring. So. Beware, I wouldn't dissuade you from ordering from them because they do have some really, really, really nice scales, but you should beware that their base may be pretty lackluster. All right, so that is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I touched on a few more of the companies you guys wanted to hear about. I'm sure there's even more. So if you want a part three, <laughs> let me know. I know there's a lot more companies to talk about. So if you would like me to talk about some other companies in a part three, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to make a part three. <laughs> so thank you all for watching and thank you all for 5,000 subscribers.
I can't believe it. We're closer to 10k now than we are to zero. And I am absolutely floored. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that watches my channel and supports my channel and likes and comments and subscribes. And it just means the world to me. I love all you guys and thanks. So I hope you all have a very wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.